She's the artist. And he's insane. And together, together we're, we're smoke, smoke scales, scales, and scribbles. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? What's up? <coughs> <coughs> so... here ten seconds and I'm dying already. Right. Sorry. Well, that's just why I was waiting for you to, like, take the cigarette out of your mouth to start the show, because yeah. I knew yeah. that you were going to go... <laughs> Sorry. And then I was even right about that, even after you took it out of your mouth. Yep. Just I know, saying. you've been on a roll recently with being right. <laughs> As she, like, half-ass rolls her eyes. <laughs> I like being right. So, therefore, when I'm not right, it bothers me. There, But... I, I mean, I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong, so, like... Oh, yeah, okay. It's okay. So, what's going on with your phone? It's, like, blowing up or something. Um, it's not getting any notifications, but it kind of lights up on its own. It's like, every two or three seconds, it's turning on and off, on and off. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, doing, phone? It's like when it senses some kind of movement. I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's bad. Having a spasm. Yeah, it does it all the time. It's weird. It makes it really easy to unlock it in my pocket. I feel like, yeah, mine unlocks my pocket all the time, and I'm like, how? Constantly. The other day, I tried to call somebody. I don't even remember who it was now. I called Holly the other day, my boss at the bar. Yeah. He butt-dialed mm-hmm. me last week. Yeah, I, I butt-dialed her like three times. She was in a conference call for oh work. Oh, my God. Jim called the store, her husband. I was like, hey, can you uh, like look at your phone? You've been calling Holly, and she's in a conference call and can't have that situation. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. You're like, my bad. Like, called the store right. while I was working. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you called me while you were at work, and I answered the phone. I'm like, what's up, baby? And all I could hear was just clanging and banging. It sounded like you were probably doing dishes or something. And I'm like, hello? <laughs> hello? And I was laughing, and the baby's sitting next to me, and she's going, dad! Dad! And I'm like, I think daddy pocket dialed us, baby, and hung up the phone. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out the security thing on that and make it so I have to put a combination in or I something. See, I thought you have a... Yeah, but when you push the side button and it registered my finger, I don't know how it goes off while I'm I working, see, but... That doesn't make sense then, because it shouldn't know. unlock it that way if it's not your finger. I don't know, but... It's weird, I don't know. Something weird happens with my phone while I'm... I don't like this phone at all. I miss That's my, what you said. But... It's a functional phone, so... I'm sorry. It's okay. It's alright. Like, my other one was gonna die eventually. I just think you're setting your ways of your I, old phone. I'm a very... Well, the problem is that what pisses me off about this one, it's not the functions of it or anything like that. It closes out of my programs whenever the fuck it feels like it. Sometimes it doesn't want to work for that program or this program. The other day, it wouldn't let me in Discovery Plus for God knows what reason. Uh, for like three hours it wouldn't let me in every once in a while I'll try to download something onto mine and it says there's an app uh, keeping Play Store from working Mm -hmm. so I have to restart my fucking phone for it to work I'm like what a piece of shit that's why I don't like it it's it's not it's got bugs yeah yeah and it pisses me off I don't like bugs I feel like I slightly have bugs in mine because it's like one of the first Nokia smartphones probably so I feel like mine's got bugs because it's a Motorola. Motorola is known for being kind of funky. yeah, and I haven't had one in a really, really, really. I had long a Mor- time. Uh, Motorola Marauder like ten years ago. It was really good. It's been, I haven't had a Motorola since I was a teenager <clears throat> because they pissed me off so bad, and so this time I really wanted to get one like my Note, but I couldn't afford another Note. This is about as close as you can get with the Chico <laughs> phones, and. Uh, it's just buggy. That's why I don't like it. Cheaper phone is the exact word for it, huh? Mm-hmm. So, uh, can we start with Tut? Yeah, we can start with Tut. There you go. All right. So, for our green hit of the night, we're starting with our guy, Tut. Can we do my favorite one next? I don't know which one's your favorite. Was Snape? Yeah. That's fine. I love Snape. So, anyways, we're smoking out of Tut to start. <coughs> Always a nice smooth choice. <coughs> she said that I'm dying. And then uh, Snape, which is a fairly new pipe. Mal bought when she bought my birthday pipe. I did. I found both of them, and I couldn't decide which one to get him, and so, because I really wanted this this one, but I knew he'd like the other one better, so I bought them both. And then uh, smoking out Dario to finish it up. Daria is a wicked bitch, usually, so... Yeah, yeah. 
<clears throat> She's usually a pretty significant asshole. I almost thought that you had Daria and um, Bling Bling out to start. I was oh, like, God. oh, God. I was like, would she trying to fuck my back? I was actually trying to decide between Daria and Flutterby. But I was about to Flutterby too much. That's because Flutterby is a bigger bitch than Daria. <coughs> Not to mention it's a pretty big piece. It's Not a- necessarily bull, but piece overall. Has a lot of things that could break on it. It and is. Different stuff, it's really so. fragile, and so I'm. I, I don't know. I don't like getting it out all the time because I would be really upset if it broke. It's so pretty. Right. That's what when we bought a uh, grasshoppers, right? Yeah. Yeah. This summer, I'm going back there. I'm getting some clothes. Take a deep wallet. Yeah, I know. I'll probably walk out of there with like three things because that's all I'll be able to afford at the max. For like three hundred bucks. <sighs> like hundred fifty. Maybe. If you fit into much of the clothes, because most of that clothes is tiny. tiny. <coughs> they had clothes there that would fit me. The biggest size that they have is the smallest size I can wear. So, like, it actually worked out okay. Well, I know that they have tiny clothes. Because, you know, vegans and hippies are usually small people, I guess. That's what they seem to think. I guess. They seem to think that they're tiny and the only thing they want to cover is their nipples. So, you know, like the crochet tops there that are really cute if they had more to them. You know what I mean? But I liked some of those cute little dresses and stuff they had. <coughs> right. For sure. Just plugging it up there for you for anyone that's interested in hippie gear and pieces and all kinds of different shit. Uh, Grasshoppers in Erie on 20, or just off of 26th and Peach, on Peach Street. They have legging shorts at Walmart right now. And I looked at them today, and I'm like, those would be perfect to wear under a dress. So like a spank. Kinda, but they're longer. They kinda come down like mid-thigh instead of, like, underwear. I gotcha. I'm like, I could wear those under a dress. (sighs) Whatever floats your boat, I guess. I wouldn't have my fat thigh problems of them rubbing together and getting sore. You're funny. The funny thing is, like, your legs have gotten a lot smaller. Honestly. They have, and they still fucking rub together. <laughs> I'm the, I don't have a thigh gap, that's why. And I'm okay with that. I don't want a thigh gap. But that's why they rub together. I honestly don't think I've ever been with a single woman that's ever had a thigh gap. That's because usually they have a body vagina, too, and you're not about that life. <clears throat> I'm I'm not really about like really small or I'm just I'm just I'm a large human. I know you'd uh, you'd be happier if I was fifty pounds heavier than I am now. Maybe not fifty. <coughs> you tried to get me to stop fifty pounds ago. Well, you still had tits and ass then, and now you're like getting pretty short on assets. Assets. <laughs> I mean, still has some thighs and a little bit of love handle and a little bit of ass and a little bit of boobs. So, like, I left you a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like, a fifth. <laughs> but. So, we, uh, we got the plague this week. No, 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 no. They got the plague. I have... I'm scared. It was the boy's fault. Yeah, it was. He brought it home from his biological father's. And then proceeded to give it to everybody. Yeah. I missed work two days in a row, which never happens. Well, I went to work, and then they sent me home because I started puking. Yep. And then he didn't have to go in today because he was still so sick. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's been, it's been kind of poopy. Kind of poopy. The other boy did not go to school today. <sighs> He's going to go tomorrow. And the baby's not been well for, like, three days. Oh, my God, no. And she's, like, so extra needy when she's sick. That little girl is already needy, but she's, like, extra needy when she's sick. Right? Craziness. I wouldn't... I couldn't come in and lay down with her in the living room yesterday, and so she came and laid on the kitchen floor <clears throat> next to where I was doing stuff. Right. I'm like, baby, go lay where you can be comfy. And it was, like, the flu, too. It wasn't even, like, a uh, cold... Ugh. Puking, shitting, fevers, you Body know. Body aches. 
Yeah, so my, far. My back's currently ass because of all of it. I know. So far, Mama hasn't got it. Knock on wood. But I'm hoping it stays that way. I feel like if you were gonna gonna, gonna get it, you were gonna get it with all the rest of us. Probably, it's probably a strain you've already had. I hope so. Because I don't want to be sick this weekend. Right. <clears throat> Saturday would be a ridiculously long day, and we have the expo Sunday, and I don't want to be sick for it because I'm fucking going, sick or not. Yeah. I'm gonna have to work on Sunday night too, unfortunately. It's more so like I get the time I want off, just not the whole day. Just the time that I want. Because <clears throat> that's about how my life works. Yeah. <sighs> but. She happens. Right? I know. Hopefully, you can actually get your vacation week off. That'd be nice. Yeah, we'll see. Because you need it. When it comes to Tinley Week, I mean that's that's a given. That I already have tickets for. Yeah, they I don't better, care who works. Honestly, they better fucking figure it out because we're not bailing on that. It's because none of them want to do what they're supposed to do. Nice thing is, Yetta will be back by then, hopefully, as long as this next doctor visit goes well. I hope so. She's so <coughs> antsy to get back to work. Right. <sighs> Of course, now she can spend extra time with Jordan, so I'm sure she's enjoying that part. Right. However, we did get a little squirrely this week. You got a new tattoo. Yeah. Smile had a cancellation last week because of a funeral. It was an so, understandable cancellation. <clears throat> it was, and it was within 24 hours. It was yep. a 24 hour yep. notice. I wasn't mad. And, uh,. I mean, you can't help when you have a, a death in the family, you know. No. So, uh, I told her she could tattoo. She's wanted to tattoo a seagull from Finding Nemo uh, for a long time. So, I told her she could finally do it just because we had time or whatever. So, the next day, she spent all morning getting it all ready. So, she tattooed on the back of my leg the mm-hmm. seagull saying, mine. I am so excited about it. My entire class thinks it's hilarious. Um, my instructor commented on it and thought it was great. Right. He got a good giggle out of it. Uh, even on my page, a bunch of people have laughed at it and whatnot. Right. <clears throat> it's almost healed up already. He looks but so good. For the, right... For the picture of the week, we'll put that as a picture so that way you guys can see the seagull saying mine. Yeah, and I don't think they've ever gotten to see a tattoo of mine either. Mm-mm. Not unless they know me. Right. Not unless... like something that we posted, but no. with us doing the rebrand and whatnot, right. I'm going to uh, be posting other stuff besides pipes. <laughs> Which, right. I mean, we'll still post pipes, you know. We'll post pipes, post picture of one of our critters, post tattoos... It'll just depend on the week. If we have something in particular that we're talking about with a critter. Like, guys, I hate to tell you, but when we go to Tinley, if we find our little Aki monitor, guess what you're getting a picture of? <laughs> you're getting a picture of the Aki monitor. Right. And there will be zero shame coming from this end. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I know, I'm super excited for Tinley. Dude, me too. I keep thinking about it because I'm just like... My appointment's keep canceling or I don't have a whole lot of them or something and so I am in panic mode trying to save money for it because I've also had to like today I had I spent $120 today and that was literally bare minimum of stuff I had to get right you know what I mean yeah trying to squeak out a vacation four months like some from start to finish along with it being Christmas time and like the my slow season so like I can't even save a whole lot one of the main problems that we're having also is, like, we just have so much shit coming up. Like, I don't think I paid for the septic system thing this month, so I have to do that on top of not having enough money for all of our bills on top of that. So I'll have to pay for bills, and then I'll have to pay for that with this week's paycheck and the barge paycheck. 
know. Because now I, all the money I made at the bar, I'm not going to be able to keep it. It's going to have to go into bill money. I wanted to use it for Tinley. I know. But I do work more at the bar this week, so at least there's that. That'll yeah. Yeah. And give I have us a, some extra money. I have a party this weekend. <laughs> so. You should be able to save most of that for Tinley, at least. I am going to try my damnedest to take all of it to Tinley. I might have to take a little bit with me to the expo to make sure I have enough money to get us all in and get what I have to get. But I would like to put, like, 95% of it in my Tinley bundle. Right. I know. I've been saving change, too, and I've been trying to save money in my savings account, but I'm going to have to fucking use it for bills this week, so. Well, I know you said your mom was saving money for you, too, out of your... Or did we use that? We used that for the Airbnb. I got you. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Which, I mean, I'll take the money out again, which will be like $200 again. Right. When we actually go to Tinley, or maybe even more than that. Because she's saving 50 a week in there for me. Right. I know. And I don't have a whole lot of more appointments coming up before we go. Right. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I'm nervous. Figure it out. <sighs> this is more so an educational trip than anything else for us, so. We already decided we're going to go cheapo on food. We're going to be surviving on sandwiches and cereal, which honestly isn't a really a huge change in my diet, but. It's fun. I literally survive on cereal. The other day, I ate three bowls of cereal for the day. That's what I ended up eating all day. Right. My stomach was fucked and I didn't want anything else. I feel that. I've been eating buttered toast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. You never eat just buttered toast because you're not usually a big butter fan. I don't mind buttered toast if I don't feel well, though. It really does help the stomach. What's really funny is the butter. I'm out of tub butter. So all I have is cold stick butter. And spreading that shit on toast doesn't work. So I threw some in a microwave and melted it and then used a spoon to dump it on your fucking toast. I was wondering what you were doing with the microwave. <laughs> He's like, are you microwaving? But microwave? I was also knew that you were uh, microwaving bar food at one point in time during it. So I was like, <laughs> maybe she's just microwaving bar food. Because I'm going to talk a little bit of shit right here. Just saying. Uh, DoorDash... Is a big piece of shit. <laughs> I'm just saying. <coughs> so, where we live, there's not a whole lot of drivers. And if they feel like being lazy, they just skip the thing and don't pick it up. So, the last five weeks of working at the bar, I've had at least one to three orders that did not get picked up because of DoorDashers not picking them up. Yeah, but you know what? It's okay, because then it comes home with us. And you didn't have to pay for it. And I get a free meal. Yeah, but you gotta think of all the customers that are getting pissed. Oh, I'm sure. Because they're not getting their fucking bar food. <clears throat> they can see that it's sitting there waiting for them to pick it up. Right. That's a sad thing. <sighs> they just have to wait for a dasher to pick it up and take it to them. Right. That's annoying. See, that's why I don't even bother. That's the reason why we haven't gotten it at our store yet. Because I'm not going to have that happening. <clears throat> Ooh, something popped in my back. You're waiting for it to be a bit more consistent because there's enough drivers. Oh, hell yeah. I don't blame you. Not at all. Kidding me? I ain't gonna have fucking complaints and shit all the time about it. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if I ordered food through DoorDash and they just did not pick up my order, somebody at DoorDash was gonna be getting an earful. It wouldn't be the, like, whoever I ordered from's fault. You know what I mean? <coughs> well, I guess, like, DoorDash themselves eat the costs on those. Because they have to refund the money to the person that didn't get their food. And then the bar or restaurant that made their food, they have to pay them for it, even though nobody picked it up. Yeah, see, I'd be throwing a fucking tantrum. <coughs> so you know they're losing their ass. At least on Monday nights. <laughs> the other thing is nobody's open on Mondays. But, on another note, 
McDonald's, Taco Bell, Arby's, and then the corner bar are the only places that have it. That's because nobody wants to deal with somebody not picking it up. You know? Right. <clears throat> Some of these people aren't overly bright, though, let's be honest here. So, uh, last week, when Hillary got there and stuff and turned the thing on at, like, 5.30, it was going off. Somebody ordered before 6 o'clock for their DoorDash. Why don't you open till 6? Oh, my God. He'll put an hour wait on it. Good. And they accepted it. But she's like, I got 25 minutes before I even get start cooking. Right. She's like, fuck that. <laughs> I used to fucking hate that when I worked at Pizza Hut. People would call at, like, we didn't open till 11, okay? They call us at, like, 10.30 as I'm trying to get my coat and shit off. To start getting my shit together. I don't answer and the phone. <laughs> we had to. Our district manager, Mr. Vern, made us answer the fuck the phone. <coughs> so I'd answer, and they'd be like, hi, you place an order. I'm like, okay, well, you can't pick it up until, like, quarter after 11. <laughs> what? Why? Because we don't even open till 11. You can't have it ready at 11? No, ma'am. I have stuff I have to prepare first. Right. The, yeah, the amount of Karens that would get pissed off, I'm like, okay, well, not my problem. I'm just worried about getting really baked and then fighting a spasm off. Like, I could do it when I'm not really baked, but when I'm really baked, I have a really hard time and I get, like, all anxiety-ish from it. And I'm like, oh, don't, don't fucking do this to me tonight. Yeah, not tonight. Let's not. So I'm just kind of worried about it. I'm trying to not cough too hard and make my back flare up more. And... Well, if you need a break, we'll stop and we'll take a break. Right. No, that's bad. Oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm just sorry. like trying to really watch it, and then as I get kind of high, I'm like, "Oh, stop it!" Right. Should named it Sandy, like a sandboa. No, because <laughs> that's what a sandboa looks like with her eyes on the top of their head. I know, but he's got a little cobra hood. Honestly, he's probably the derpiest looking cobra I've seen, ever seen in my life. But that's why I love him. So the other day I saw a comment that somebody was saying, a corn slash rat snake. I've never heard a corn snake be also known as a rat snake. It's not, but sometimes people mix them. It's <coughs> probably a hybrid of the two. They actually, uh, at Nerd, I believe, produce them. And they're super, super friendly. Hmm. Super cool snakes, I guess. They make a great hybrid. They do fine. Hmm. I was just asking, well, they had put a a corn snake, a.k.a. a rat snake. And I was like, pretty sure that's not the same thing. It's not. They were wrong. The rat snakes <laughs> are much bigger than corn snakes usually, aren't they? Um, sorry. I think they both can get roughly the same size. Corn snakes get to be a pretty decent sized snake. Yeah? Yeah. They get like four or five feet, something like that. I was thinking like corn snakes were getting up towards like, it's like seven feet. Or um, rat, rat snakes were getting up to like seven feet. I think subspecies of rat snakes can, but as a whole, rat snakes are more like five or six feet. You know what I mean? Right. Well, let's You know how you Google shit all yeah. the time? Oh. So how big does a rat snake get? How big do rat snakes get? A corn snake that is adult is between 61 and 182 centimeters long and weighs on average 0 0.9 kilograms. Okay. So, it says rat snake, but it's giving me the shit for corn snake. So maybe, is a rat snake a subspecies of a corn snake? I don't know. Guys, we're going to have to get back to you on this one. Hmm. Mal's got to do some digging. And this is going to take a little bit. So, like, and I can't hmm. do it right now or I'm not going to talk to any of you. <laughs> so, Even less than you already have not had times. <laughs> so, like, I'll get back to you. Before I give you any misinformation, I will get back to you. Huh. Intriguing. Now I gotta figure this shit out. <laughs> right? Because I didn't think that was a thing. Okay. So, how about we talk about a strain? This is a strain that I would really like, I think. Yeah. Even though it is a Steva dominant. 
Wait, hold on. Let me get my stack ready. Yeah, get it so that way you're not going to be fucking crinkling that while I'm talking. Exactly. That's why I said hold, please. Okay. Snack at the ready. So this stativa-dominant strain is called Outlaw. Ooh. Its genetics is uh, 80% stativa-dominant. Its parents are super haze and amnesia. Oh, God. Like... I would love to try a kind of weed that's called amnesia. Come on. That's got to be fucking epic. I'm just I want to try it too, but it also sounds terrifying. Can I'm we, just saying this sounds... Can we learn about that one next week? Amnesia? Mm-hmm. Uh, remind me. <laughs> Your wife has amnesia. <laughs> so, uh, the THC levels is 15 to 20%, which is um, mid-grade, not super high or anything. It's unknown for CBD. It's... Smell and or flavor is sour, fresh, and citrus. Ooh. Its effect is strong, uplifting, and euphoric. Outlaw, and then it says, true old school haze bud grows fast and easy. Outlaw is a true old school uh, haze of first first class quality. What's unique about her is that despite being able to deliver an authentic old school haze smoke experience, she's still very easy to grow and so that even the new cannabis growers can follow look forward to a bountiful harvest in an astonishing short time. So okay, so uh, there's a lot of sativas that sound really delightful, honestly. I know. And I'm like, ah, sativas give me migraines. So anyways, uh, it's a medium difficulty, so I guess hazes are usually a dick to work with if this is saying it's pretty easy and it's a medium. Flattering, flowering type is a photo period of nine weeks. It's mid to end October's harvest time, so you're going to want to get your stuff going in August. So that way you have August and September and then the beginning of October, and then you want mid to end. Uh, yield, you're looking at 500 milligram, or er, yeah, 500 grams per square meter. Wow. Well, 3.7 grams is a cut, if that tells you how many cuts there is. That's okay, also wet. You're trying to get me to math, and I hate to tell you, but... It's like over 100 cuts, easily. Wow. The yield is a medium on it. It grows tall, indoor and outdoor. And you can buy it from Dutch Passion Seed Company in Amsterdam, established in 1987. We so, should try it. Try what? The strange. Outlaw? Yeah, that sounds lovely. I like the sounds of it. I mean, anything that's considered outlaw, I want to give it a go. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> So what kind of questions you got for me? This is a terrible time to ask me that. <clears throat> well, we gotta do this. I mean, we got we're we're going on time here, babe. Um. Okay. If you had to describe your whole personality in a phrase, what would it be? How long can the phrase be? Try and keep it under five words. Jesus Christ, that'd be the perfect phrase. Jesus Christ, fucking bang. <laughs> That'd be about how my life goes. <laughs> my personality. Uh, I don't know. Let's hear it. What do you got? A clusterfuck of nonsense. Or a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you I do- don't... I don't really know, like, a good phrase that would go for me. I live a pretty interesting life. <laughs> I'm very busy all the time. Yeah, but it's not about your life. It's about your personality. Oh, I gotcha. My personality. I don't know. Probably, damn, why are you so annoying? <laughs> no. Let's be honest here. Like, nobody texts me on a single daily basis besides you and, like, one other friend that texts me quite often than one that I hear from, like, once a week. I don't know. There's literally, like, you talk to me every day, of course. And then otherwise, I have two people that talk to me very, like, just at random spurts. Like, nobody likes to talk to me. (laughs) 
So, like, you can't tell me it's because I'm not annoying of some sort, because I have to be of some sort, because nobody talks to me. Well, I think you're lovely, and I love you, and I don't think you're annoying at all. And I know. if they think you're annoying, then they're missing out. I don't know. I'm just saying. <clears throat> just including my uh, scientific studies I have done. <laughs> well, they're wrong. Hypothesis, hypothesis disproven. Oh, okay. You're not annoying. All right, what's your other question you got? Let's see. What activities work best for you for relaxation? Like, what do you like to do when you feel you're overwhelmed about everything? This is a loaded question. <laughs> she knows it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to listen to music. That helps me a lot, just like with getting... You like to go for a drive and listen to music is what you like to do. I mean, I could just sit and listen to music if I have nothing else going on in the room or something. I could just sit there and enjoy it. I mean, it helps me de-escalate myself or relax. Right. Just get in a relaxed mood. Like, just some tunes works out well. Um, usually some really good sexing. <laughs> That's a good way. <laughs> she knew that was what was going to be said. <laughs> but, um, yeah, those are, like, pretty much what I do when I'm not busy with stuff, other stuff. I listen to music and... Me. Yeah, yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you? I usually get into my artsy stuff pretty heavy. Like, I'll zone out and do it pretty heavy. Or some, some kind of craft that I wanted to do or been putting off, I'll get zoned into it really hard. Then that's all I focus on until I'm done being pissed off. Right. Well, on the rare occasion, I'll rage clean. All right, so we're talking about relaxing, woman, not yeah. being mad. I just mean, like, to yeah, help but, me relax or, like, yeah, if I'm like, escalated to help de-escalate myself. Yeah, but, like, <clears throat> I'll rage clean once in a while to kind of get out of that mindset and stop being so worked up or overwhelmed about everything. You know what I mean? Okay. It doesn't happen. So what do you do for relaxing, then? (laughs) I lay in my chair and crochet. Or I hang out with you and smoke some weed. Or other things. Or... She says other things. Not other things that kind of way. Some lovings. I just like to hear some other things, yeah? Uh, Or I'll get sunk into some kind of artsy thing at my desk. Or a murder show. Sometimes, usually both. I do, I watch a lot of murder shows. Yeah, that's all she watches. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. Either that, or that 70s show in Third Rock. I really want to get George Lopez, too. I love George Lopez. I've always loved all the George Lopez shows. Dude... Since it was actually new when I was a teenager. Oh, I know. I used to set it up to watch. You remind me to watch it every night. It, come, it used to come on at like 11 o'clock at night and I'd watch it. I on Nickelodeon. It. Once it started yeah. to be on Nickelodeon, like after it was out for a couple of years, I'd watch it every night for like two hours. Me too. I loved George Lopez. His mom is the best. She's such a bitch. Betty. Yeah. I like the son, even though he's kind of retarded. <laughs> I like Carmen. She's just stupid. She's just kind of like gnarly most of the time, so I'm like, all right, yeah, no. I'm she makes that. me giggle. Right. The whole show is really good. It honestly. is. Like, it, it is. It really is. And his friend Ernie with the fucking ears kills me. I love when Ernie and Benny get into a relationship. What? When Ernie and Benny is in a relationship together. Ernie and Benny don't date. She can't stand Benny. No, there's there's at one point in time where they date. Well, now we have to buy it because I need to see this. Yeah. Hold on. She's got to Google something else. Did Benny and Ernie date in the show George Lopez? It doesn't answer my question because it's a fucker. <laughs> Brr. I'm telling you. There's like an episode or two that they're dating, and it's just, it's, they're so fucking ridiculous. Oh, she's in concentration mode now. 
She's lost to a phone. Hold on. I am think I found an article that might answer my question. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. I don't care about who Randy was. I know who Randy was. That's not who we're talking about. We're talking about Randy. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe she went Benny Mary. No, not, no, it all it talks about is Randy. The dude with the beard. But yeah. <laughs> there's nothing here about them dating. I'm telling you. Well now we have to watch all of them to find out. <laughs> That's all there is to it. That's the only way we can know. Guys, another IOU. I hope we remember. Yeah. Okay. I promise nothing. But anyways, that's another set I want to get. Yes. We don't have any of yet. I need the SVU set, all of them. There's like 25 episodes, or seasons. I know, and I need all of them. I can't watch them anywhere! To go from watching it almost every day, to not being able to watch it at all, for like years, is awful. I miss my show. I'm so far behind. I need to start from the beginning and watch them all again. Oh, yes. All 25 seasons. Every It'll take single... you a year to watch them all. No, it won't. Watch and see. She's like, watch and see. I'll watch them every day, all day long. While I'm cooking, while I'm working, while I'm doing stuff. Yep. You're funny. The best part is, is even if I've seen it, I don't ever remember the ending. So it's still a surprise to me every single time. You're crazy. It's my favorite part about shows like that, my stupid memory. We used to watch them, and I'd be like, oh, this is the episode where they go to this side of town, and this happens, and they go, and she's like, how do you remember all that? I'm like, because I've seen it like four times. I'm like, I've seen it like 40 times, and I still don't remember. I'm like, how the fuck do you remember it? I love Like the guy that that's show. like killing people in his uh, sleep because he's drawing, his drawings. <laughs> Pretty sure that's SVU. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's Criminal Minds. Is it Criminal Minds? Yeah, that's Criminal Minds, babe. I don't know. I, I love Criminal Minds, too. That's a good I, one. I ain't gonna say I don't. That's a good one. It really gets you wrapped up into them. Oh, I cried when Morgan left, and I cried when we thought that um, Prentice died. It's either season 11, 10 or 11. This guy gives uh, Hodge a hallucinogen. And he's like sleeping, and like he, like he has a dream where Morgan gets shot and killed, and like, like the whole team does, and like it's such like so realistic and creepy. You're just like, oh fuck, like you don't know he's sleeping. Oh, I'm fairly certain I cried during that. And you're entire like, oh episode. my god, and then he like wakes up, and I was like, holy fuck, I was like, oh my heart was going 100 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure I cried through that entire episode, even though I'm like, there's more episodes after this, because it was on, we were watching on, I think, Netflix. Or the episode that Garcia got shot. That one bummed me out. Yeah. Oh my god. Because I ain't gonna lie, I love Garcia. She's so bubbly and happy. Oh my god, I adore her. I'd have to make her my BFF. She's I like, her. I can't watch this. This is just too creepy for me. No, no I'm good. <laughs> like, She's I'm like, such a sweet person. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. I know. I know oh my god, we're so stoners. I Jesus. love Reed, though. He's my favorite. Yeah, he is funny. We're such stoners. You know where they all came from, right? No. So we were talking about you watching TV to relax. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> That's okay. Honestly, though, like a lot of times while I'm relaxing, I'm just like vegging out in my phone and watching TV and spending time with you. Like, that's like... Yeah. That's my stoner and ADHD brain and all that all into one, just being content. Like, I'm actively watching a movie while playing on my video game. Like, you ask Mal, I'll turn the fucker off to watch a particular part because I actually want to watch it, watch it, <laughs> instead yeah. of just, like, how I watch things. I literally, I don't know how I do it, but I literally can consciously watch something and play a video game at the same time and tell you exactly what happened. I know you can. And not even be something I've ever seen before. I know. But, I like, it's, it makes me it makes me happy. And then I'll, like, go over and, like, squeeze your leg or something like that. Just I like know. So that way you'd be like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, that's right. I know. I get lost in what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm scrolling on my phone. Sometimes, recently, I've been laying in my chair with fucking yarn upon yarn because I'm making a blanket the size of fucking Canada. <laughs> Her first time crocheting anything in ten years. And I was like, go big or go home, bitches. 
So she's got like a A, ten foot wide snake. Yeah, yeah. That's what the other boy As the other boy calls it. Yeah, he thinks it's just a really big snake. A purple and black snake. He likes it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure as it gets bigger, he's going to want it, because that's how he is. Oh, I know. I know. He's so bad. He ain't having it, though. It's mine. I don't know. In the end, you'll have four blankets, I'm just saying. Because you'll have to have one for us for on the couch, and then you'll have to have one for the boy, and one for the other boy, and one for the baby. Yeah, because they're all going to want one, and so for the next year or three, I'm going to be making fucking blankets. I found the next set of yarn I'm going to use on something, though, that's mine, because oh. it's beautiful. It's like black and neon colors just stripey through it, and I'm like, yes. Yummy. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to make something out of it. I just don't know what yet, but I got to get a little better at what I'm doing. Right. I feel like you go in spurts of shit. Sometimes. Like, all the time. <laughs> you'll get into a spurt where you read all the time. And then you'll get into a spurt where you want to watch TV all the time at night. And then you'll get into a spurt where you want to just work with, like, all the reptiles all the time. And then you'll get into a spurt with, like, you want to do, like, art stuff until, like, your eyes are going cross. And you're <laughs> like, okay, I can't do this anymore. You... Or, like, like, you just go in spurts and then you go back to something for a little while. I'm like, good lord, girl. I know, I know. My I'm... spurts that I've always done is, like, the radio show. I mean, worked all the time, you know. And then the radio show. And then I always just played Apex. And then now I don't have any time for that, so. And I don't do a radio show anymore. I do a podcast on it. Which, by the way, we've hit over a year on, by the way. Nice. I was like, that's crazy. Well, I know. I'm very inconsistent about a lot of things. I'm fully aware. I don't know. Like, there'll be a three-foot-wide blanket in my house for, like, <laughs> two and a half years. <laughs> waiting for it to, for you to come back and finish it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I have to finish it out of spite. Because now, because, like, her hands will be, she'll be like, Oh, my ta- hands are tired and sore and want to take some time off from it. And then she'll never go back to it. <laughs> She'll forget about it. Damn, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> That's my only worry about you doing this. I'm going to have a three foot wide <laughs> fucking blanket sitting around forever. <laughs> You're funny. She ain't fighting it. I'm just saying. Ugh. You kill me. Because I don't know how many times you started books. Got a little ways into them, you're like, I need to take a break, my eyes hurt. And then you don't pick it up again for like three months. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> how the fuck do you remember the story after that long? But you don't remember SVU every time you watch a fucking thing. <laughs> no. It's a problem. I have very selective memory. Oh, very. Okay. <laughs> I have zero control over it, by the way. That's the funny thing to me, though. I'm just like, oh, man. See? A smorgasbord of nonsense. That's what I am. You okay? Okay. I just moved wrong my back. Like, I had a major twitch, and I was like, don't do it. Right. It's so bad. I... Completely pity for anyone that have pity for anyone that has a bad back, because it is the worst. It really is. Yeah. Like when your back's actively being a dick. Oh, it's so bad. You can't get comfortable. You don't want to jerk around too much because you don't want to have a fucking back spasm or a jerk in your back that causes a problem. I know. It's awful. It is. I don't know how you do it because when my back's fucked, I am junk junk. Well, this is the price I pay for being lazy for two days. <laughs> I'm having the flu. I know. I know. Does yours pinch your nerve too? I'm guessing. 
Like, does it go down one of your butt cheeks and down no, your leg? Then not no. usually. If it's not deadly down your butt cheek and down your leg, it's probably not a... Your sciatic nerve is impinged, at least. That's the one that usually people struggle with. That's the one I have a problem with. It just feels like somebody hit you in the back with a sledgehammer. I got you. And that's how your muscles feel for, like, three days. You can't move them because they just... Every time you move anything, it aches. And it shoots a pain up your back side. Like yeah. Like, up your... All the rest of your back. Okay, so when I quote unquote sprained my back, that's what happened along with the ner- the pain going down my butt and down my legs and making my one leg compl- like I couldn't even put weight on it. It was like dead. I couldn't fucking do anything with it. Right. When my back's all fucked, it's it's definitely a chore. Like, I can't usually stand up completely straight. Yeah. And, like, I work long hours and stuff like that. I just, you just have to, like, work through it. The problem is, is my back's so used to me working all the time that when I'm not working for a couple of days, then it's all fucky. Usually when I get back from a vacation, it's, like, it's not great. I know. I know. Unless we stay busy on the vacation. Well, like, staying as busy as I normally am, which is, like, at least eight hours a day, is not easy when you're on vacation. I say, we went to New York City. We're pretty busy those days. It wasn't too bad for you to adjust going back to work after a few days off. Because we did so much walking while we were there. Uh Uh-huh. But, like, when we go spend the weekend, I don't know, like, when we went for Mother's Day, we went and stayed at the hotel and whatnot, or we went to Pittsburgh and went to the Expo and whatnot, you really didn't do as nearly as much walking. You did more driving. A fucked up right. driving, but not a whole lot of walking. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I but know exactly what you mean. At least Tenley will be, I mean, it is a lot of driving, but it's also a fucked ton of walking. Right. I'm excited to see everything and what it all turns out to look like and be. Me, too. I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I think they were just doing the 20th anniversary of it last year. So, like, this has been going since the early 2000s. Right. That's pretty cool. It's awesome. I'm excited to see what all we learn while we're there. Right. I'm just excited to see all the stuff we're going to see. I'm this is going to be a lot of stuff that we've never seen before. <coughs> I think I'm going to have a hard time. Like, my brain's going to have a hard time processing all the awesomeness. This is what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. It's it's going to be some pretty cool shit. Like, I'm so exci- excited to see uh, Bill's face lace uh, monitor. I'm hoping that I can hold stuff. <sighs> I don't know. You never know with this kind of a thing, yeah, like, how know. big it is and stuff. Most people let me hold whatever I want to, in, you know, when we go to the our monthly one. But there's that's because we've been going like, almost for a year now. Almost there's only, like, month. a couple hundred people in the whole building at that time, too, not, yeah. like, 30,000. They, they see us every month, so it's gotten to the point where most anybody, like, can I hold that? And they'll be like, yeah, you can hold that. And they let me hold that. Right. So, like, going to Tinley, I'm doubting it's going to be like that. <laughs> Just saying. I know. You never know. Especially when they're like, so are you interested in buying this? You're like, no, I just want to hold it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hold it just to hold it. Just so I can interact with it. I want one someday. But, you know. Today is not that day. No. I don't have room for it yet. Oh, it's like a Bell's face lace monitor, like seven thousand dollars later. I'll fucking have one. You watch it and see. It'll be a thing. But you know what I mean, like five, six thousand, seven thousand dollars for them. Right. They're amazing. And a whole bunch of space. Yeah, they need a lot of room, a lot of water, a lot of room. Right. I know there's a lot of stuff that needs a lot of space. I have a feeling we're going to end up with several species of monitor someday, because you really like the Argus monitors, and we already are going to get have Aki monitors. We want a Black Dragon. We want a Bell's Face Lace monitor. You want a Parenti. I do. I will have a Parenti. 
in a perfect world, I'd have a Komodo dragon. But, like, I have a feeling we'll end up with some gnarly monitors. Right. Eventually, I mean... <clears throat> It'll take a long time to get there, but I mean... I mean... I'm talking over the long haul. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to tell what we'll have in 10, 15 years from now. It's hard to tell what we'll have space for by then, what we'll have built by then. Oh, I know. I'm excited, though. Right. It'll definitely be, it's definitely, we're in the starts of a really big adventure, that's for sure. Right. Oh, I know. Lots of work. Lots of fun. Lots of cool experiences. Right. And I think that's, like, what I really like about having our reptiles. Every new experience you have with them is a different experience. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like... Right? That's how it is. Like... When you have those experiences, you're like, awesome. I know. I know. I get excited about a lot of things. And a lot of things that they do, and we do with them. Right. I just like hanging out with them. Everything's always different. Like, sometimes they're... That's more kind of rare and to go. In. Yeah, they, sometimes they want to go, go, go. Sometimes they don't. It dep- sometimes it depends on who's holding them. <laughs> if I hold your little Edgar, he doesn't really do a whole lot for me. He's like, nope. If I don't move, she can't see me. And then she can't give me a bath. Right? Well, like Wednesday. I've missed getting her out lately because she has stuck shed and stuff, so we haven't and, been fucking with her too much. Yeah, now she's in shed. Right. But this Wednesday, you get her out, and, like, I'll just have her on my hand while I'm, like, working, and I'll just set my... She'll, like, crawl into my hair and fuck around in my hair for a while and go down onto my shoulder and go down onto my desk and fuck around on the desk and... Right? <clears throat> oh, I know. She likes to explore shit, and she's super chill. Like, it's a... Everything's different with her. Like, some days she's super chill and don't want to move. Then some days she's fucking trying to explore all kinds of shit. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, see, see, here's what I'm learning. While Clarice is super chill, she also is very curious and wants to see everything around her. So she's constantly trying to get into something. Tear Bear is always into something. Always. Destroying my desk, destroying my table, wrapping up on my pencil, going all over my painting, trying to climb the Christmas tree. You know, all of it. Into everything. And Mocha's the same way, and Robert's usually pretty about the same. But not as nearly fast a pace. He's a little bit slower about it. He's a curious little guy. He is. He just takes his time doing stuff. He's more like Clarice in that manner. She's not in any hurry to get there, but she's good to go. He's like, oh, what's over here? And he meanders his way there. Whereas Mocha and Terry are like, Nero, let's go. <clears throat> I was thinking about it today. So what if Terry is like third generation out of the wild is all? Like, <clears throat> the reason why I say that is because <laughs> none of our other carpets actually like hunt like they would in the wild on, like, a branch, like she does. So I'm learning it's kind of a hit-and-miss thing. Oh, it's gotcha. because they're just captive bred. Some of them have stronger instincts than others. There's a lot of snakes that we have in captivity here that they wouldn't survive a single a full year in the wild. They wouldn't have made it. <coughs> you know what I mean? <coughs> They've lived in <coughs> captivity their whole life. <laughs> no, but, like, if they had been born in the wild. Because... Like, carpet pythons, I told you, sometimes are hard to get started. That's that's why they have a high mortality rate. Because if they can't, don't figure out eating, then, well, they, they die. You know what I mean? Like, but in captivity, we can usually get them to eat. Right. Whether it's through just... Yeah. Getting lucky to get them to either strike or else put it next to them and they'll eat it, like, because they're shy. 
or whether you have to assist feed them, or if you have to start cutting limbs off and just feed them limbs. Right. <clears throat> right. I know. Eventually, you can usually get them to eat. But, I don't know, it's... I don't remember how we got on that topic, but... Instincts. Yeah. It's pretty hit and miss. Whether your carpet python is going to be an active hunter or not. And some of them actually hunt by prowling their cage. They just fucking run laps. Some are super lazy and they just wait for you to bring them food. And some perch and sit, like Terry does. Right. I gotcha. I wasn't sure. I was just wondering if maybe she wasn't that far out of the wild. No, because we have been able to import from Australia for a hot minute. No. No. I gotcha. We've had carpet pythons here for a while. Long enough that she should be further in than that. We have to think, like, you're looking at eight... Eight years for two generations, at least. Right. About 12 years for three generations. So, I mean... Uh, I don't know how long it's been since we couldn't import animals from Australia, to be honest with you. I have no idea. Me either. <clears throat> so, are you ready? Yeah. All right. What is goblin mode? <sighs> goblin mode. Oh, uh, I don't know. I I don't know. My brain's drawn a severe blank today. I gotcha. So it's a variation of cowgirl sexual position, <laughs> in which the person on the top has their hands and feet planted into the other person. Often also involves grunting and occasional manic laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Holy fuck. Yeah, I, I was kind of confused. <laughs> I was like, how? What, uh, how? Yeah, that sounds yeah. uncomfortable. I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny, though. I was like, oh, okay. All I could think about was a crotch goblin, which is a child. And I'm like... <laughs> hmm. But I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I can't wait for this next week. Next three days are gonna be kind of rough, and then after that, it's gonna be kind of a pretty chill day. And then I have to look at night, and then I have the next five days off. I have that party Saturday. I think I. I don't think I have an appointment Friday, so I'm gonna pack everything Friday. <coughs> Are you actually going to this time? I did last time because I had an appointment until the wee hours of the morning. And I packed up... I had packed up earlier in the day everything I could pack up. But I couldn't pack up everything because I still had an appointment the night before. Because I was dumb. I, I don't know why I scheduled one the night before a party. Probably because I needed it. That was when you had four people, right? No. No. What, what was that? Where's my phone? Oh, it was when I did the little girl's day with the rose down his forearm. I gotcha. <sighs> because he used to do construction, or still does, or whatever, and so he... His fucking arms have been sunburned a gazillion times, and it's like trying to tattoo leather. Right. Hmm. Solid, nice dude. All right. His arm skin just sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you the inside of his arms aren't going to be too bad, though. I don't know. We haven't got that far. We're doing his touch-up here beginning of March. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, we're just going to touch up both of them at the same time. Whatever needs done on them. But when I do have this time off next week, we're gonna do Rodney. Oh, I'm so excited to get Rodney done. I know you are. <clears throat> Took me a long time to decide what I wanted. <coughs> up <the stage. coughs> what 
We'll see if my mom hates this one as much as she hates my other one. My mom, my mom says the heart on my shin is ugly, and she hates it. Really? Mm-hmm. She has ever since she's seen it the first time. I was like, awesome. So, like a tattoo that is like comes from like your thought process, and you hate it. Sweet. No, they don't bother me. I love it. I think it's cool. I like it too. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think my f- least favorite tattoo of yours is probably your Captain Spaulding, and it's only because he's a fucking creepy clown, and I hate when he's looking at me. <laughs> and my ex-wife did it. <laughs> yeah, fuck that bitch. <sighs> like I know that's the other reason why you're like, mm, meh. yeah. That's okay. It's more the fact, the biggest part of why he's my least favorite is because he's a creepy clown and he looks at me all the time. And he's like, ha! All the time. You're funny. (sighs) It's funny because that's not at all like his personality. I know. I don't care. He's still creepy. His personality is creepy. No, fuck that. I don't like clowns. It's super funny because I used to be a really creepy clown for a haunted house for some time. Yeah, not when we were together, you have been. <laughs> I think it would traumatize me to see you dressed as a creepy clown. And like, I get into that character when I get the makeup on. It's so it's bad. Yeah, see, and I think it would traumatize me. Right. Because I love you dearly, and that would just like be the biggest conundrum in my brain ever. <laughs> right. I would just go into shutdown mode and be like, well, I guess kill me. <laughs> <laughs> like, that that would be how that would roll. Right. Don't do that to me, please. Right. I won't. <sighs> oh, sorry. No, you're good. <sighs> you're funny. Uh, My brain is like, brr, it's literally in there drooling right now. Right. I don't know what this weed is, but I, it I, makes me stupid. I don't know. I can't sit here for too much longer. Like I literally can't. I know you. Like can't, I'm baby. so worried about having a back spasm right now. I know. And if I do, I'm fucked for the next three days because I have long days. I can't right. Do that. So, we might have to cut it short tonight, guys, because my back is fucked. Like, oof. I'm so worried about my back right now. I know. But, we're going to cut it a little short tonight, guys, because, like, I'm not going to fuck my back up. <laughs> so, we're out. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and follow. Remember, keep it wild. Keep it creative. And see you later. Toodaloo, motherfuckers.